I mean, this is the verbiage on my mom's uncle's birth certificate. It says colored. Is that birth certificate now, should that be flagged for being worse than the F word? Hi, I'm Danielle Romero. Thank you so much for being with me here today on my channel. In spite of YouTube's best efforts to keep you from being here. I talk about family history and American identity and the importance of connecting to those family stories. And I did a video about YouTube centering my channel and I was actually wrong about a lot of it. It's way worse than I thought and I brought the receipts. And so even if you are not a subscriber to my channel, but you care about free speech in any way, I think this is a conversation that everyone should be involved with. Now, as a former teacher, I once had to navigate those tight corridors of structured education where each word had to be measured. You were essentially handed a script to read every single day and each lesson had to fit neatly in these prescribed lines. I decided to step away from teaching after I had my first child, and I'm so grateful to be back in it, so to speak, here on YouTube. I love learning in public. I love bringing people along with me, and it has been the best job I have ever had. I yearned for a space where history could be discussed with the honesty that it deserves, and we have been able to do that a little bit. You know, this is where I choose to tell the stories that the textbooks gloss over, where the voices of these you know, past family stories can be heard again. So I made a video that was extremely important to me. I took us back to Natchitoches, Louisiana in the 1950s. Natchitoches, Louisiana is important to me because that is where my mom's grandmother was born. Natchitoches, Louisiana is the reason I'm sitting here today in front of you. I went on a journey to understand my mom's family story. Her grandmother had tried to hide who she was when she left Louisiana and moved to New York where I was born and you know all my adult life I have been thinking about what it would be like to go back to Natchitoches Louisiana and reconnect and so this video that I found was a group of people talking about the desegregation that the Supreme Court had just passed in the schools. And it was the community grappling with what that looks like on both sides of the aisle. I made sure that there was absolutely nothing against YouTube's terms of service in this. There was no swearing. Everyone was extremely polite, even in their disagreements. And I just thought it was a really beautiful video. It was raw history. And I, I think that we need more of that. Now, that video got flagged by YouTube. And I want to tell you why. This has become extremely personal to me, not just because this is my channel and I love this community and I love learning with you, but because they have crossed the line here. So I reached out to YouTube after getting the notification. Well, before I explain what happened, let me explain a little bit. If you're not on YouTube as a creator, you may not understand all the stuff that's happening behind the scenes. So just real quick, basically for the videos that I make, YouTube plays ads. I don't have control over what those ads are, but they split with me. They keep 55% of that revenue and I get 45%. And so they have flagged some of my videos as what they call limited for ad revenue. Now that doesn't mean they're not, they're not putting ads on those videos. It means that they're keeping all the money, but that's, that's not actually my main issue. So this says the 1950s Southerners debate racism and the thumbnail says you won't believe what he admits so that's the thumbnail so what youtube said was the issue with this thumbnail was they said and this is before i was able to actually talk to a person they said there is profanity in the title thumbnail or usage in the content well i don't use profanity ever and you can see there's no profanity in the thumbnail and their selection for why they flagged this video was it had stronger profanity like the f word used in the titles or, or thumbnail again not there. So, but some examples of content will, that will also fall under this very strong profanity is use of hateful language in the video. So I decided to go to their link that explains what hateful language was, and I couldn't find anything that matched what was going on in the video. Absolutely nothing that would get flagged. So what I did was I reached out to YouTube um, a couple weeks ago, and the only way to talk to a real person is on Twitter, on X. So I reached out to them and I was like, you guys flagged this video. I don't know what to do. 
can someone just let me know what's going on? Because I think there was a mistake. And I, the other thing is I had requested a manual review. So this is not just an AI issue. A manual review means that you're asking, will a person please look at this? And, and usually that's enough to fix it because a person's going to see the context or whatever. And I was like, can you let me know at what part of the video is being flagged? And they kind of like gave me the runaround. And finally, they gave me a timestamp. I was like, yes, I can go to the video and see what are they complaining about. So I went to the timestamp. Now, before I tell you is at the timestamp, I want to tell you about the birth certificate. This birth certificate came from my mom's cousin last year. So this is my Grammy's brother's birth certificate. My grandmother has passed away. I don't have her birth certificate, her long form one, which I need to get it. But this is her brother, Uncle Danny's, and this is Lola's son. And I want to tell you what it says in the birth certificate. It is listing him and his mother and his father. Now, if you remember at the time in the 1930s, husbands were not in the room when <laughs> the child was born. Sometimes they didn't even make an appearance in the hospital. It was a very different time. It says Louise and John. And over here, they have Louise listed as colored. Now, weirdly, they also have her husband listed as colored. The point of contact was the mother. It was Lola. And so they're looking at her. They're not asking her, are you colored? They're just writing colored. And I don't know, you know why the assumption is that her husband was colored. I, I think you we can you know make some jumps here, right? Some leaps. They wrote colored for her husband as well. And this is on my mom's uncle's birth certificate. So, you know, two colored parents a colored child. Okay. So this is my family. The word that was flagged as being as bad as the F word was because a girl used the word colored. Now I didn't agree with what the girl was saying, but she was trying to talk about the separation during Jim Crow and what had been happening and saying, you know, what would it be like for these white children to be going to school and having a colored teacher. And they're, they're kind of talking about this in the classroom. And this is happening, this is happening right in the middle of this huge change. And I think this is really important history. Now, I wouldn't put out a video where somebody was saying something in a real nasty way to another person or anything like that. But I'm so disheartened that the word colored now is being flagged as bad as the F word. The algorithm is blind to context. They, there's a word that gets flagged and they see the word, but not the purpose. And so, you know, AI is just gonna flag it and not understand it. But my appeal for a manual review did not fare any better. A human looked at this, watched this, took in the context and still, despite my explanation, despite the historical context and the ridiculousness of it all, still flagged it. So now the platform is still profiting from this, but I can't claim any share. And I have to be worried now, at what point do I have enough things flagged that they just shut it down? These videos are more than just content, first of all. For me, this is my chosen path of how I want to contribute to the world to understand American identity, even and even beyond. This is a gift for my kids. And this is also my livelihood now. I, I took a huge leap in deciding to do this instead of going back to work. And, you know, for YouTube to... I'm sorry. It is about the principle of this. It is about the ability to share history in its own language, in our own language, to confront the uncomfortable and to learn from it. How can we discuss the complexities of our past if even the language of the time becomes unspeakable? I mean, this is the verbiage on my mom's uncle's birth certificate. It says colored. Is that birth certificate now, should that be flagged for being worse than the F word? Where do we draw the line between fostering sensitivity, if that's what YouTube thinks that they're doing, and erasing the very markers that show us how far we've come? I'm not going to stop you know, engaging in this larger conversation about history and family stories. And I read every email that comes through. I'm not able to respond to them all, but I'm so thankful for all the messages you have been sending. And if you want to stay connected with me in case YouTube pulls the plug, I would love to have you join my mailing list. I'll leave a link for it below. And I'm also on Twitter. You know, my aim on here is not to provoke, but to share knowledge, to expand love for our families and our neighbors and to ensure that the past isn't sanitized or forgotten, but understood. And this is the true path to learning. And as far as I'm concerned, 
the truth will set us free.